On day one, I spawned into the jungle as Ant-Man, everyone's favorite size-shifting superhero. Whoa, this is awesome! I've always wanted to be able to shrink down really tiny. Hold on a minute, why is my suit not working? Darn it, I must be out of pim particles. I wasn't sure how I managed to get here or where here even was. Everything around me looked like it was normal, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Why isn't my shrinking tech working? Maybe there's something I can do to fix it. Just then, I heard the crawling of a lot of legs and turned around to see a spider. It was huge, way bigger than any I had ever seen before. Something weird was definitely going on here. Whoa, aren't you a little big? Then there came the horrible noise of something whirring loudly and it was coming closer and closer. I could see a huge, vicious looking creature coming straight towards me. It looks like a huge head with much smaller arms. Well, well, isn't that the question of the day? Are you sure it's not you who's a little smaller than normal? Huh, that is a good question. I suppose I don't feel any smaller than I normally do, but then if I was, how would I know? Why don't I save you the trouble then? You are indeed much smaller than normal, and it was by my hand that you were shrunk down to a more manageable size. Hey, that hardly seems fair. You can't just go around shrinking people. Who the heck are you anyway? I am Modok. Cower before me, Zozo, for you're trapped here in my miniverse. Miniverse? Oh no, like a tiny universe? Precisely. Here, I'm in charge. Nothing is its normal size, and now you're trapped here. But let's give you a challenge, shall we? If you can make it out of the miniverse within 100 days, I'll let you go free. But if not, then you'll be trapped in my tiny world forever! <laughs> and you think getting out will be easy? Think again! Suddenly, Modok unleashed a blast of energy that burned the huge spider to a crisp. I had to get to cover so I didn't get blasted too, but it was too late for the poor spider. Yeesh, talk about having a big head. On day two, I tried to find my way out of this crazy jungle I was in. The trees were so dense that I could hardly see a clear path in front of me. On top of that, I realized I only had five hearts, so I had to be careful. If I ran into Modok again, or any other dangers in his miniverse, then I'd be in serious trouble. Just then, I overheard a loud, angry buzzing sound. When I followed it, I stumbled across a group of enormous tarantula hawks. They were way bigger than normal insects, just like the spider had been. Oh man, these are some nasty looking bugs. Maybe I can communicate with them. Well, well, look what's buzzing, my bug bros. A lost little superhero with no powers. This is the one Master Modok trapped here. Come on, let's get him. Destroying him will win us a lot of points with our master. They attacked me. I quickly noticed I had a bow in my inventory and used it to try and fend them off. But at my size, I wasn't able to do much damage at all. Plus, I was outnumbered. No, I can't die. Not yet. I still have to find my way out of this miniverse. But then, right as I needed help, Someone came rushing out of the trees and fended off the tarantula hawks. It looked like it had the body of a bee, but with huge arms and legs like a person. What the heck was going on in this place? Hey, are you all right? You should really be careful out here. Thanks for saving me. What's your name? You can call me Harlow, the honey golem. What's yours? Well, technically, I'm meant to be Ant-Man, but I don't have any powers, so I guess I'm just Zozo. On day three, Harlow brought me to his hive, where there were even more honey golems just like him. They were living in a cave and had built themselves an entire community underground. Wow, I've never met any honey golems before. We were created in one of Modok's experiments. That big head of his house is a pretty big brain. He's been using this miniverse to perform all kinds of crazy experiments on the innocent insects and creatures here. We started out like normal bumblebees, but now we're monsters. Hey, I don't think you're monsters. You saved me from those mean tarantula hawks. Harlow explained that Modok had been causing havoc all over the miniverse with his mad scientist experiments. I told him that I needed to find my way out of there before my 100 days were over. You need to get out of here, I understand. But you're going to need some help if you have any chance of escaping the miniverse. So how about I tag along to assist you? Wow, thank you so much, Harlow. But wait, how are you gonna help me get out of here? Well. Let me cut you a deal. You want to be freed from the miniverse, and I want the miniverse to be free from Modok. So, how about we team up? 
I'll come with you. It can be dangerous, but I know my way around, so I can navigate and provide protection. And in return, you can build up your strength so we can stop Modok's schemes. Once that's done, I'm sure we'll find a way to get you out of here. What do you say? Okay, sure. If we can take down that big-headed bad guy and get me out of here, then that would be amazing. Then we better get to it. Modok is ruthless, and he's left plenty of his experiments running wild out there. They'll do anything he wants. So Harlow and I headed out as a team. On days four through five, we made a start on gathering some resources and building up my strength for the fight ahead. I punched some trees and gathered enough wood to make a crafting bench. Afterwards, I made myself a set of wooden tools. Then, Harlow showed me a cave where I could mine for cobblestone, and then I used that to craft a set of stone tools as quickly as possible. Harlow and I then explored a bit and eventually found a spot where we could build our base on. We were pretty far from the Honey Golem's underground city, so I built a room for both Harlow and I to stay in using the materials I had been gathering. It's not exactly the Avengers Tower or the Baxter Building, but it's a start at least. Hopefully, we won't have any trouble from MODOK and his experiments bothering us while we're here. Just as I had finished up, Harlow brought some food that he'd managed to find for us. He wasn't kidding. He really knew his way around the miniverse. I ate some, and when I did, I quickly gained 10 hearts for a total of 15 hearts. Look at that. You've got a little bigger, too. At this rate, I'll be tough enough to take on MODOK in no time. Let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet, but I'm sure you'll get your chance soon. With our new base already, night was beginning to fall, so Harlow and I settled in for some much-needed sleep. On day 6 through 8, Harlow and I went exploring, searching for some more materials to craft new items and maybe even upgrade our base. Harlow led the way as we headed back towards the jungle area, being careful we didn't run into any more of those awful tarantula hawks, or something even worse. Soon, we found a jungle spider who was being terrorized by creepers. At first, we thought they were just normal creepers, but there was something wrong about them. They had longer, freakier legs. They were mutants, made during one of MODOK's mad experiments. Hey, leave that spider alone! They didn't listen, so I started firing arrows at them using my bow. I scored a few direct hits, and it angered the mutant creepers. Luckily for me, though, Harlow had my back, so as they came charging at us, we were ready for a battle. Even with my weapons and Harlow's strength combined, our fight with the mutant creepers was still a tough one. They were much stronger than your average creepers. But with a few well-placed shots and with Harlow's strength, we were eventually able to overpower them before they managed to explode. We went to check that the spider was okay. Thank you both for your help. My name is Jupe, the jungle spider. Whoa, spiders can talk here. What do you mean? Harlow, you mean you can't hear Jupe? Oh, of course, my Ant-Man helmet. It must be allowing me to talk with bugs. I hate to ask, but there's another of Modok's experiments nearby. I'm far too weak to fight it, but maybe you could beat the beastly thing? Leave it to me. Zozo, you guys go on ahead. I'm going to go back to the base to collect some more supplies. On days 9 to 10, I followed Jupe back to where she had last seen the Mad Modox evil experiment. After a fair bit of searching, we found ourselves at what was left of Jupe's spider nest, with a massive mutant earth elemental roaming nearby. That's the monster. It destroyed my home. Jupe was understandably upset, but unfortunately had caught the elemental's attention by accident. The creature spotted us almost immediately and instantly started making its way towards us, ready to attack. Oh no, I really wish we hadn't left Harlow back at the base. While Jupe scurried off to hide, I pulled out my sword and took a swing at the earth elemental. I could barely leave as much as a scratch. It was way too powerful, and I was still too weak to fight it. Before I could get overwhelmed, I ran as fast as I could, only stopping when I met up with Jupe. We'll have to come back when I'm stronger. Maybe if I can fix the suit, I can grow to a giant size and stomp him. I'm sure you will, but in the meantime, what should I do? I have nowhere to go now that this monster has ruined my home. Well, for the time being, you're welcome to stay at my base with me and Harlow. On days 11 to 12, I made my way back to my base with Jupe beside me. I quickly built her a room where she could spin some new webs to make herself nice and comfy. Thank you for coming to help me and for taking me in, Ant-Man. Most people would see a spider my size and be terrified. That's okay. I'm glad I can understand you through this helmet. How did you get to that size? Did it have anything to do with MODOK? Oh, MODOK, that horrible madman. He's been toying with everything here in this miniverse. 
He alters sizes, creates new creatures whenever he feels like it, and abandons them if they won't fight for him. We'll never be at peace until someone puts an end to his schemes. Sounds like a job for me. After I had talked with Jupe, I went out and mined for some more materials. I hadn't had a chance to gather anything since fighting the elemental. I managed to come across iron and coal, so I made a furnace to smelt the iron and crafted some iron tools and boots. After all that work, nighttime was approaching, so I had to move quickly if I wanted to take advantage of the last moments of daylight. Walking a short way from my base, I found gravel and began to dig for flint, then kept that in my inventory. On days 13 to 15, I was feeling eager to get stronger and to see if I could get my powers back, so I spoke to Harlow for his advice. Well, I only became this strong because of Modok's experiments, but you should probably try training. I hear that's what a lot of superheroes do. Practice does make perfect after all. I guess that's worth a shot. I then went out in search of some of Modok's lower level cronies to fight. After a bit of traveling, I ended up finding myself in a forest. There were strange creatures flying about in the air, and they were a lot smaller than most other mobs I had seen. But what these dark leeches lacked in size, they made up for in numbers. Okay then, let's take you on. I launched into an attack, wielding an iron sword I had crafted. The dark leeches swarmed me, but I knew that the best way to attack them was up close. They were too small for me to pick off from a distance with my bow and arrows. They were fast, but each one could be slashed down with ease. I just had to be careful not to get bitten by any of them. After a lot of swinging my sword about, I managed to defeat the swarm of dark leeches and come away victorious. The dead leeches dropped some healing potions. Whoa, now this should definitely come in handy. I used the healing potions, and to my surprise, it caused me to gain a few more hearts. Well, I guess that just happened. On day 16 to 19, after beating those dark leeches, I decided to go off exploring a bit more to keep building my strength up. During my travels, I stumbled upon a village, but when I went to take a closer look, there was nobody around to be seen. I searched all the buildings. However, none of the villagers were in their homes. Huh, I wonder what happened here. Where did everybody go? You should not have come here. Ha! Ah, you scared me! It was the ghost of an ordinary villager. No wonder I couldn't find anyone here. Something bad must have happened to them. It is not safe here. You must leave while you still can. What do you mean? What happened to you? We were living peacefully here until Modoc came into this miniverse. He took the people of this village to use in his experiments. He's a monster! In his madness, he tried to create a creature that was powered by anger that would get stronger the more enraged it became. But the experiment went wrong and the creature ransacked our town. This is why you must leave. It's still here. Wait, a creature powered by anger? That sounds a lot like the Hulk. Suddenly, a villager beast came bursting through the roof to ambush me. The ghost vanished in fear while I rushed outside and took out my weapons, ready for a fight. The beast wasn't as strong as I was expecting, but we were still pretty evenly matched. It was looking like I might need to run away again. That is, until the ghost appeared again and helped distract the beast. Quick, while well, his back is turned. Zozo smash! With a big swing of my sword, I put an end to the villager beast, and the battle was done! Whew, thanks for the help! On days 20 through 22, I was heading back to my base. On the way, I kept my superhero training going by fighting a few zombies that I came across. I took them out with ease like they were nothing. Harlow was right, practice does make perfect, and I'm definitely improving. As I got closer to the base, I gathered some extra iron, which I held onto. I'd be able to improve my gear with it once I made it home. I finally arrived and smelted the ore I found into ingots. I then crafted some iron armor and an iron shield to defend myself in future battles alongside with a new sword since mine was about to break. Well, if a shield works for Captain America, then it'll work for me. Starting to feel a lot more confident with my superhero skills, as well as my newly crafted tools and weapons, I decided to pay a visit to an old enemy. Jupe, I'm gonna go and teach that Earth Elemental a thing or two about what happens when you mess with innocent spiders' nests. I made my way back to the ruins of Jupe's old nest, and that's where I found the Elemental waiting for me. It immediately charged directly at me, swinging his huge rocky fist as he tried to hit me. I blocked with my new shield, but his attack stunned me, making it difficult to keep my health up or move out of the way. 
Luckily, Harlow had given me plenty of food to bring with me, and my armor protected me from each of the elemental's blows, too. He continued to swing at me, but I had already taken down the villager beast. This was just another of Modok's experiments. Waiting for the perfect opportunity, I landed the perfect hit and managed to defeat the earth elemental, causing him to burst into rocky smithereens. Woohoo! Among the stone remains of the elemental was a note, so I picked it up to take a closer look. It was an order from Modok. Don't let that no good hero find where we've stashed the Pym particles. If he finds out where they are, he'll be able to use them to power his suit. We can't have him shrinking down to sneak out of the miniverse or growing bigger than a house. He'd wipe us all out in no time. Whatever happens, stall him. Keep him away from the particles. Of course, Modok's the reason why I can't get my Ant-Man suit to work. I can keep getting stronger, but without Pym particles, I can't use my powers. So I guess the question is, where do I start looking? From day 23 to day 26, I returned back to my base to give Jupe the Jungle Spider the good news. Jupe, I did it! I defeated the elemental that had ruined your home. You can go back anytime you like now, though of course, you're always welcome to stay here too. That's so wonderful to hear, Zozo. I think I'll stay to help you until Modok is defeated. Then I'll return to my true home. All thanks to you. Feeling good after helping Jupe, I made myself a flint and steel. This will be perfect for making campfires. After that, I spent some time building a strong perimeter wall around my base. That'll help keep out the mobs at night. From day 27 to day 31, I decided to venture out into the desert to continue my search for the Pym Particles. Without them, I'd never have any hope of defeating Modok. While out in the desert, I ran into a Pharadon. Hey, sorry to bother you, but would you happen to know where I could find some Pym Particles around here? Pym Particles, hmm? I can't tell you exactly where to find them, but I have some theories. I'm actually an advanced particle scientist, and I wrote my thesis on Pym Particles. Oh wow, that actually sounds like super valuable knowledge. Want to come stay at my base and work on this together? I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm Frank, and sure, I'll take you up on that offer. As Frank headed back, I decided to mine some sandblocks that I could take back to base. When I arrived again, I turned the sandblocks into grass blocks and used them to create windows in my base. That should get a little light on the situation. But I didn't get to enjoy my new windows for long. Harlow the honey golem ran towards me, looking panicked. Zozo, I need your help. I just got word there's been an attack on my underground community. What? We better go immediately. From day 32 to day 35, Harlow and I ran straight to the caves that protected the underground community of honey golems. The cave was crawling with giant, vicious centipedes, a type of aggressive mutant centipede created in Modok's evil laboratory. Don't worry, everyone. We're here to help. Keep away from the centipedes. But we had arrived a little too late. There were so many centipedes, and even though we tried our best to fight them all off, sadly, we spotted no honey golems inside. Hopefully, some escaped. Harlow and I worked together to defeat the rest of the centipedes, but the damage was already done. I'm so sorry, Harlow. I wish we could have done more. We must defeat Modok, Zozo. We can't let him get away with this. From day 36 to day 39, I needed to get away from my base. After the incident in the caves, I had trouble even looking Harlow in the eye. Instead, I went out to the swamp, seeing if I could find any interesting materials out there. While searching, I met a joust who needed a favor. Hey, stranger, Jerry's the name. Being a joust is my game. Now, I don't want to impose, but my little swamp shack is surrounded by crocodiles. If you were to help scare those chompy critters away, I'd give you something in return. Hmm, there is something I need. Do you happen to know anything about Modok? Modok? Oh, me and that guy go way back. We went to Miniverse College together. He's always been a huge meanie. If you scare off those crocodiles, I'll tell you what I know. Deal. I went further into the swamp until I found Jerry the Joust's shack, which was surrounded by vicious crocodiles. I pulled out my sword and ran in, swinging and flailing. Get out of here, crockies. Go on, get. Once the crocodiles had been defeated, I returned to Jerry the Joust and asked him what he knew about Modok. He acts like he's confident, but believe me, the guy's real insecure. He's only as strong as the monsters working with him. If you're able to become strong enough and get him alone, that's your best chance at defeating him. 
From day 40 to day 43, I decided I'd spend some more time sprucing up the base. Seeing as I was spending so much time there, I should at least make it look nice. I spent most of my time working in the yard. I put in some nice trees and flowers that really livened up the whole base. Who would have thought I'd have such a green thumb? After that, Harlow approached me and told me that there were a lot of honey golems who needed a place to stay after the centipedes destroyed the underground town. Of course, I invited them all to come stay with us and even built some extra rooms onto the base so they'd all have a place to stay. That's when Frank the Ferradon came to me with some exciting news. Zozo, I've been doing some research and I got a lead on some potential pim particles out in the Badlands. That's awesome! To the Badlands I go! From day 44 to day 49, I went out to the Badlands in search of the pim particles that could give me my powers back. Instead, I found Modok and one of the freakiest looking minions in his roster, the floating, bug-eyed Beholder! Looking for pim particles, Zozo? As a matter of fact, I am. So if you'd kindly step out of my way, I'm gonna keep searching. Oh, I'll save you the job. I have them. What? I already took the particles, and I'm going to use them in my experiments. They'll give me the power to create even larger, more dangerous monsters. And monsters so tiny, you won't even see them until they get you. The miniverse will be my personal playground, and then I'll fan out and take over the entire multiverse. I'll never let you get away with it. That isn't up to you, Zozo. Beholder, destroy him. I'm going back to the lab. Modok flew away, leaving only me and the Beholder. I pulled out my sword and tried to hide my fear as the terrifying monster flew towards me. Maybe we can just talk it out? From day 50 to day 53, I started fighting the Beholder because, as it turns out, he did not want to just talk it out. He was fast and strong, but thankfully I was able to use all the skills I learned so far to gain an advantage. I lost a few hearts along the way, but the Beholder was eventually defeated. Jeez, I hope I never have to see another one of those again. While I was still resting after the fight, I noticed that the fallen beholder had dropped something. A notebook marked Book of Research, written by Modok. That's perfect. Maybe it can give me some inside information. The inside of the book read, Without the pim particles, my research is coming up short. But soon, soon I'll be able to take it all to the next level. When I have the particles, the first thing I'll do is take the smallest threat and make it into the biggest one, then unleash it on those hapless fools in the mountains. The mountains? That's where my base is. I need to get back there immediately. From day 54 to day 57, I ran back to the mountain as fast as I could, ready to head off whatever monster that Modok had unleashed. And the last thing I could have expected was a giant andriophage rampaging through the mountains. Its size must have been massively enhanced by pim particles. I don't even want to know what kind of ender flu that monster would give you. I tried to attack its legs, but that didn't seem to have any effect. Its head was its only weakness, but I didn't know how to get at it. And what's more, from the direction it was heading, it was going straight towards my base. Think, Zozo, think! Wait! I have an idea! I ran ahead of the giant enderophage's path and started desperately digging a pit into the ground. As the giant enderophage approached, it fell into the pit, putting its head at eye level with me. Time to cure this walking virus! With one strike of my sword, the giant enderophage was defeated, and it dropped some pim particles into the pit. At long last, they were mine! I collected the particles and went straight back to my base, where I figured Frank the Ferradon would know what to do with them. You found the pim particles! This is amazing! So can I use them to change my size? No, not yet. Leave them with me, Zozo. I'll refine them and get them ready for use. You'll be ready to take the fight to Modok in no time. From day 58 to day 62, I decided that it was time to refine my base and gear a little more and put all my new scientific skills to good use. I started by making Frank a scientific lab so he could help me more efficiently. After that, I did improvements to my room, adding more chests and forges and making it feel more fit for me. It's like having my own little laboratory. Hank Pym would be so proud. Then I made my way to a nearby diamond mine and took all the diamonds I collected back to the crafting room so I could upgrade my gear. I made a full set of diamond armor to help protect the fragile technology of my suit and a diamond sword to help me pack a punch. But even though my equipment had never been cooler, my base was looking a little gloomy. To spruce it up, I added some new couches so me and the boys could relax. This has got to be the coolest base in the miniverse now! 
From day 63 to day 66, Harlow the Honey Golem approached me at the base with a cool idea. Zozo, I think it's important to get as many allies as we can when fighting Modok. We have no idea how many mutants and monsters he's created out there, so we need to get a team of our own. That's a really good point, Harlow. Where do you think would be a good place to look for more allies? Try the forest. I bet Modok's goons have hassled a lot of creatures up there. They'll probably be eager to sign up. Harlow was right. I needed to leave the base and venture over to the forest where I could find new potential team members for our anti-Modok movement. But the forest was way bigger than I thought, so I was searching for a whole day without finding anything. I hope this whole thing wasn't a waste of time. I can't afford to waste any of my 100 days to get out of the miniverse. My thoughts were interrupted by a huge figure running through the forest towards me, a polyfam. I pulled out my sword in a panic and prepared for a fight, but the polyfam stopped. He wasn't here to fight me. Please, kind stranger, my name is Peter, and I was playing with my son out in the forest when suddenly a monster attacked and took him. I need help to save my son. Will you help me? Of course I'll help you, Peter. I'm Zozo. You lead the way. From day 67 to day 70, I followed Peter Polifam deep into the dark forest. It didn't take long for us to find exactly what we were looking for. Peter's son, a baby Polifam, being chased around the forest by a scary, buzzing, warped Moscow. That looks exactly like one of Modok's experiments. Modok? He's the supervillain that made all the mutant creatures around here. Stand back, Peter. I'll take care of this one. I pulled out my sword and ran in, getting the warped Moscow's attention and distracting him from attacking Peter's son. The nasty mutant attacked me and we started to fight. Didn't anyone ever teach you not to pick on kids, Moscow? Every time he hit me with his powerful Moscow arms, I could feel my health going down, but I needed to keep fighting for Peter and his son's sake. It was a hard battle, but in the end, the warped Moscow was defeated and father and son were together again. You did me and my son a great service, Zozo. One day, in your hour of need, I will repay you for this. No problem, man. It's just what heroes do. From day 71 to day 74, still feeling good about helping Peter and his son, I continued my search through the forest. I really do love going on adventures, and if you love going on adventures, like, subscribe, and search ZOZO for more videos from me. Ooh, is that an abandoned mine? I approached an abandoned mine deep in the forest. I didn't expect to make any friends down there, but I figured I would at least be able to mine for some useful materials. I'm always making the best out of a weird situation. But in that abandoned mine, I didn't find any decent materials. I found Modok himself waiting for me. You've fallen into my trap, you pathetic teeny tiny Ant-Man. The only thing tinier than you is your brain. Well, my brain would have to be tinier than me, or it wouldn't fit in my body. Silence, fool! Modok was angry that I made him look dumb, so he fired an energy blast at me. He missed, and I ran back at him with my diamond sword. But when I hit him, nothing happened! What? Force field technology, son. It protects me in response to trauma. You'd need to be a lot bigger and stronger than that to even put a scratch on me. And with that, Modok laughed and teleported away. I still wasn't nearly big or strong enough to defeat him. From day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base, feeling glum after not being able to defeat Modok yet again. Maybe if I make some defenses, that'll make me feel better. I decided to create a few guardhouses so that I would feel more at ease and my friends would be able to seek refuge on whatever side of the base they happened to be at. Building is so cool! As if on cue, Frank the Pharadon approached me. I agree, Zozo, and it's thanks to some good, old-fashioned science that I've finally been able to refine these pimp particles and upgrade your suit so that it can do what it always should have done. You mean, I'll be able to change size now? I won't just be a mini Ant-Man? Exactly, Zozo. Give it a whirl. I activated my refined pimp particles and felt myself growing to my proper height, at long last, complete with double the hearts. It feels good to be back, Frank. From day 79 to day 84, seeing as I was back to my full strength, I wanted to go and settle some old scores. First, I went deep into the jungle and encountered some old enemies, some of the tarantula hawks that were bothering me and my friends when I was tiny. Hey look, it's the pipsqueak. Oh wait, he doesn't seem like such a pipsqueak anymore. Thank you for noticing. I fought the tarantula hawks who had once been such a challenge with my new strength and my diamond sword. Within a few minutes, they were all defeated. I went on the rest of my journey with my head still high. On my travels, I ran into a mad scientist doing some research deep in the jungle. 
Hello there, I'm Mike, the local mad scientist. I'm conducting a wildlife survey. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm Zozo. Nice to meet you, Mike. I've just been testing out my new pin particles. They help me change my size at will. I can get bigger or smaller. That sounds fascinating. Would you mind telling me more about this for my research? Not at all. I spoke to Mike the mad scientist for a while, explaining to him exactly how the particles worked and how my suit used them. All the while, he looked super interested and made notes. In the end, he was so thankful, he gave me an enchantment he'd crafted that would increase the damage of my sword. My luck looked like it was finally turning around. From day 85 to day 89, my luck turned around again, for the worst. I returned to my base, only to find it being attacked by a gang of water elementals working for MODOK. I just can't catch a break around here. I pulled out my diamond sword and ran into fight. I didn't want to use the full power of my pin particles just yet because I knew I'd need them to take on Modok himself. So I fought the water elementals the old fashioned way. And I'm gonna make you regret trying to destroy my base. I defeated most of them, but a bunch of water elementals started to make a run for it. And I chased after them. I didn't want any of them to get away after this. But while I was running, I saw a distressed looking Kato Blapas standing in the distance, trying to get my attention. Stranger, please, I need your help. My friend, little Kato, is stuck in that really tall tree. I'm worried he's gonna fall and hurt himself. Don't worry, I can help. I used my pin particles to get a lot bigger. Due to my size, the little Kato was confident enough to jump towards me and landed safely. Thank you, Zozo. No problem. And with that, I continued the chase. From day 90 to day 94, I chased the gang of water elementals until they were forced to stop at a ravine. Nowhere to run, guys. Now we have to fight, and I think I'm owed a little payback. Without a second's hesitation, I started fighting the water elementals. One by one, I defeated them until only one remained. He was unusually good at taking my hits, even with a diamond sword. I don't understand, how are you so tough? Before he even replied, he punched me so hard, I lost some of my hearts. Naive little Ant-Man, I'm not just any water elemental. I'm one of MODOK's greatest experiments. The angrier I get, the stronger and faster I become. And believe me, you got me pretty angry, Ant Boy. And just like that, I knew I was in for the biggest fight of my life so far. From day 95 to day 97, my battle with the water elementals continued. He was the strongest and fastest enemy I'd ever faced, and as he got angrier, his skills increased. Face it, Zozo, you're outmatched. I'm going to crush you like an ant. I clearly couldn't defeat him like this. I needed a new strategy, but how could I defeat someone who got tougher as they got angrier? Wait, I have it. I needed to calm down. That way, he'd be weak enough to lose. I just needed to call him down. Water elemental, imagine rainbows and puppies. I don't know what you're trying to do, Ant Boy, but it won't work. Think about calming waterfalls and the smell of fresh cut grass. Think about relaxing at the end of the day and watching your favorite TV show. No, how dare you? You can't do this to me. I'm getting calmer. Think about getting to sleep in late on a Saturday. Think about getting a massage and drinking some herbal tea. Think about meditating in the middle of a meadow filled with dandelions. Blast it, I've never felt so calm. I finally used my pin particles in combat, becoming tiny and attacking the water elemental with great speed, making me even stronger. It only took one hit like that and the water elemental was pushed into a corner. He dropped something, it looked like a map. Wait, is this a map directly to MODOK's secret laboratory? Why would you even have this on you? You work for the guy. I have a terrible sense of direction, okay? But it doesn't matter, you may have defeated me, but you'll never defeat MODOK. He's got the biggest brain in the miniverse. Yeah, and the smallest heart. I'm gonna defeat MODOK if it's the last thing I do. And with that, the water elemental vanished. On day 98, after defeating all the water elementals and finding out the location of MODOK's secret laboratory, I returned to my base to speak with my friends, Harlow the Honey Golem, Jupe the Jungle Spider, and Frank the Pharadon. Friends, it's time. I need to defeat MODOK once and for all. 
I want to thank you for all the help you've given me, but even if I win, this might be goodbye, because I'll need to leave the miniverse." Harlow spoke up first. Zozo, you've helped me through some tough times. When my people's homes were destroyed by Modok, you were there for me. So after you've taken him down, I wish you luck in whatever comes next. Then, Jupe, the jungle spider. You're one of the most heroic people I've ever met, Zozo. You may be an Ant-Man, but you've got the heart of a jungle spider, and I mean that as the highest compliment I can give. And of course, Frank the Pharadon. You're not just a hero, Zozo, but a brilliant scientist. I believe you've gained all the knowledge and skills you need to defeat that big-headed monster. All you need to do now is believe in yourself. On day 99, with everything prepared, I decided to make my way to Modok's evil laboratory so I could stop the dastardly villain and escape the miniverse once and for all. Using my refined pin particles in my fully upgraded suit, I decided to make myself incredibly tiny so none of Modok's guards would spot me. On the way there, I ran into a cockroach who was about the same size as me in my shrunken form. Hey, Mr. Cockroach, hope you're having a good day. I'm on my way to defeat a supervillain. The name's Carl, my friend, and I wish you luck in your quest. Defeating a supervillain sounds like a pretty cool thing for you to do. I continued on my quest until I reached the laboratory, but as could probably be expected, it was surrounded by sentinels, powerful mutant zombies created by Modok's evil experiments. Maybe they won't see me if I'm tiny, but what if they do? I don't know if I could take them all on at once. Then I heard big, thundering footsteps coming towards me, and I turned to see Peter Polyfam. Maybe I can be of service. Peter, have you come to help me? Sure have, Zozo. You helped me save my kid, so now I'm going to help you stop your supervillain. I'll distract those doofy mutant zombies. You head in there, and you bring the big boss down. You got it, Peter. Let's end this thing. On day 100, I ran past the gang of mutant zombies while Peter Polyfam distracted them and entered Modok's evil laboratory. The big-headed bad guy himself was waiting for me as soon as I came in. It's over, Modok. I know your plans, but they won't do you any good now. I have the pin particles, and my suit is fully operational. If I was you, I'd just give up. But you're not me, Zozo. I'm a genius, a visionary scientist. You're just a goofball who likes to dress up like a bug. If you were truly smart, you'd be able to see the value in what I'm doing here. All I see is an evil guy who's hurting people to benefit himself. And if you can't see that, then I guess we better just get this over with. I prepared to size shift into an even tinier version of myself when Modok blasted me with some kind of shockwave that blocked my powers. Too bad, so sad. Mutated zombies, take care of him. A bunch of Modok's mutated zombies came running out to attack me. Of course, a coward like him wouldn't want to fight for himself. I'm ready. I'll take you all on. I pulled out my diamond sword and attacked before they attacked me. Thanks to my upgraded suit and diamond armor, it's not like they could do much damage to me anyway. Soon enough, every single one of them was defeated. It was just me and Modok. You still can't defeat me. Do you really think you have any hope at defeating my power and my genius, you puny little Ant-Man? Puny? Is that what you're calling me? I activated my pin particles and started to grow. It didn't take long for me to tower over Modok with my new giant size. How about now, Modok? Oh no! With one more strike from my giant size, Modok was defeated! Finally, after 100 days of struggle, I could leave the miniverse.